Hello and welcome to another This China Germany review. My name is Christopher and I want to show you the Meizu MX-5 today. The fablet which is situated in the upper mid-range was my daily driver for more than a month now and able to show what it's capable of during this time. Now it's time to tell you all about my experiences with this handset. So let's first have a look at what you all will see first when getting the MX-5. It's the packaging. Now you might wonder why this box looks so different compared to other MX-5 review where the handset is placed in a booklet? Well, the reason is that I got the international version from Meizu, which they sell via Meizu Mart and Amazon. I will get into the details about the pros and cons later on in this review. So let's open up the packaging and see what's inside. Well, right on top we find the booklet that some of you might have missed till now. Next to a short intro we find the phone inside it, well protected from any possible damage. Damage. Letting eyes hover back onto the box, we find the SIM ejection tool in a flimy logo shape, which is glued onto a paper card. This paper card actually also acts as an envelope and houses a quick start guide as well as a warranty card. Below this card, we find the remaining accessories. There is one EU power supply in my case with two amperes output and one micro USB cable. Everything nicely packed. With the MX-5, Meizu for the very first time switched to a body that's almost entirely made from metal. The frame and the center rear part as well as the chassis are crafted from one single piece of aluminum, giving this phone a very sturdy and premium appearance. In addition, this makes the phone look just stunning, at least I think so. Just the caps covering the upper and lower part of the rear are made from plastic to ensure a perfect signal. The rear and the frame are both matte, but the frame actually slightly flattened towards the screen where it is polished to be glossy, which again looks very nice. Looking at the slightly curved frame, we find the SIM tray on the left side, which offers space for two nano SIM cards, but no micro SD card. On the lower side, we find the voice microphone, the micro USB port and the media speaker grill. The latter one unfortunately isn't placed so well since no matter how you hold the phone, it often happens that you cover it with your finger, which results in no audio coming through anymore. In terms of audio quality, the speaker is pretty good since despite its enormous volume, it doesn't show any distortions and offers a very decent bass playback. Moving to the right side, we spot the physical buttons there, which include the on-off switch as well as the volume rockers. There have been reports about loose buttons on the MX-5. On this device, this is not the case, but I can confirm the issue though, since I got a faulty unit at first that I had to send back, and exactly this device had the loose buttons buttons that are described often. Seems like we've got some inconsistent build quality here. Looking at the upper side, we don't find much there. This side only houses the noise cancelling slash camera mic and a 3.5mm headphone jack. The front of the MX-5 now also sports a physical home button like it's the case on the MX-4 Pro or the Meizu M2 Note, but in contrast to the M2 Note, the, buttons is, the button is not only pressure and touch sensitive, but also comes with a fingerprint sensor that works works very well. Something I dislike a bit is the noise that occurs when pressing the button, which is a very loud click sound and, well, that sounds a, a little cheap. Anyway, on the other hand, this gives the button a very sharp pressure point, which definitely is a pro. With the MX-5, Meizu for the very first time uses a Super AMOLED display on a device of the MX mid-range series, which is 5.5 inches in size and operates at Full HD resolution. The screen, thanks to the tiny LEDs the pixels consist of, offers intense colors, a very high contrast and intense blacks due to the backlight that isn't needed. This at the same time saves energy, at least if you display darker contents. What's more, the outdoor readability is very good. 
You notice though that due to the low price tick of this phone in China, Meizu use a budget AMOLED panel on the MX-5, but one really can't blame them for it. You definitely can see single pixels upon close inspection of the screen due to the pentile metrics that is being used there, and you will also notice a bluish tint when looking at the screen from extreme viewing angles, but all this isn't disturbing during daily use, and more importantly, the screen still is better than anything else you can get in my opinion. Mesa did nice with the touch panel as well since the surface is very smooth and more importantly doesn't attract fingerprints and if you got some smudges on the screen though you can remove them easily by just rubbing it on your clothing. The screen also is very responsive and precise which makes using the phone a pleasure. Like with the MX4, Meizu once again put their bets on a MediaTek SoC for the MX5 which this time is a MediaTek Helio X10 alias the MT6795T, which is MediaTek Snapdragon 810 competitor, clocked at 2.2 GHz and equipped with 8 Cortex A53 cores. In real life, the chipset always performs excellent, no matter if you surf the internet with tons of open tabs or flooding the free GB of RAM with some serious multitasking action. Not even current hand games max this SoC out yet, which you can see now nicely here with the phone running a graphic intense scene of Modern Combat 5. Very important, the chip's temperature never goes above 50 degrees Celsius, which means your phone will never get too hot to touch. In benchmarks, the MX-5 reached around 47k points in Antutu, well over 5000 points in Geekbench 3, Multicore and 944 points in the single core test. Those are good results, though not the maximum the Helio X10 is capable of. Reason for that is the software. The international MX5 still runs Flyme 4.5, while the Chinese version runs 5.0 already. The 4.5 version is known to be a little slow at times, which got fixed with the switch to 5.0 and Android 5.1. Expect the update on the international version to arrive sometimes in December. Apart from the slight performance deficit of Flyme 4.5, I have to say that I still love Flyme OS and to be honest, I like it much more than Xiaomi's MIUI these days. The reason for that simply is that I love the simplicity of Flyme. You never lose track about what's going on, you don't get overloaded with information, everything looks very clean and structured in a logical way while looking very nice at the same time. Something I love about all current devices made by Meizu these days is the multifunctional physical home button, which I used for the first time on the Meizu M2 Note. If you touch it with your finger, it acts as a classic back button, but if you press it instead, it will act as a home button and go back to the home screen. Also, the embedded fingerprint scanner of the home button works very well to unlock your device. You simply hit the button shortly and keep your finger resting on it until it's unlocked, which usually is done with in way below one second. This works very reliably and with a very low failure rate. Out of 10 tries, maybe one fails. Important on any phone is the reception quality and that is what we talk about now. Meizu in the past pretty much never screwed up here, but is that the case on the Meizu MX-5 as well? At least for mobile networks it is, since reception quality is top notch there, no matter if it's 2G, 3G or 4G. Problematic only is the missing support for the FDDLT band 20 at 800MHz. This is not supported by the MX-5, not even on the international version. Unfortunately, the MX-5 has some issues with Wi-Fi networks, but that seems to apply only to the international version. Manuel did a review on the Chinese version of the MX-5 in our written review and didn't have any Wi-Fi issues, but in my case this looks totally different. On the floor below my router I had frequent signal losses and I can also force a signal loss right next to the router if I cover the top of the phone with my hand. That just should not happen and really isn't caused by a faulty unit since my first MX-5 that I sent back had the very same issue. This is why I recommend not to purchase the i version at least for now, which means not purchasing outside of China via MySumart.
or Amazon. In the other categories, I didn't face any issues. Bluetooth as well as GPS work just perfectly fine. Outdoors, the MX-5 gets an instant GPS fix with up to 22 satellites and even during bad weather conditions or inside a building, it is still possible to get a good fix within a comparably short time. Next topic is audio performance and this is where the MX-5 did very well again. During phone calls the spoken words can be understood loud and crystal clear on both ends and even in loud environments thanks to the noise cancelling mic which works very well. Listening to music is a pleasure as well even through the internal speaker since the MX-5 is not only very loud but also offers a pretty intense bass playback for a speaker that is built into the frame. The only problem is that it often happens that you cover the speaker grill with one finger and then you won't hear anything. With headphones the MX-5 offers a perfect and balanced audio output but that's something I am used to from Meizu devices since Meizu has a past in the hi-fi industry and those years of experience with making devices sound great. Previous Meizu devices always have been able to impress with their more than decent cameras. Now with the MX-5 they unfortunately didn't do a step forward compared to the MX-4. The phone still uses the same Sony IMX220 sensor with 20.7 megapixels which got extended by a laser autofocus. Compared to the OnePlus 2 the focus doesn't work as well though it is often hard to take decent macro shots since you need to have quite a distance between the camera and the object to get it sharp. The laser focus also has issues in darkness, especially when taking pictures of smaller objects. The OnePlus 2 was way easier to handle in the same conditions. Luckily, the MX-5 offers you manual control on the focus. The picture quality in daylight is very nice, the pictures look very sharp and detailed and the colors look very natural. Also, using the HDR mode you can get some very nice and dramatic shots that sometimes look just stunning. In darkness, the camera doesn't do so well sadly, the pictures often look very noisy and not sharp. Pictures taken under streetlight show a reddish tint. That's one more thing the OnePlus 2 did way better. Video recordings on the other hand look just stunning again and offer a lot of details and great audio quality especially in Ultra HD mode. Even noises with a low volume are captured on the videos which makes the phone come handy for nature recordings. The camera app is pretty minimalistic but that's something Meizu always did and I actually like that a lot since it makes taking photos easy even in manual mode. Tapping on the upper area or swiping to the left or right you can switch between the camera modes where you will find the manual mode as well. Here we have full control over shutter speed, ISO value, exposure compensation and focal length yet still can use automatic settings on demand. In automatic mode you can choose between various filters you find on the lower screen area and you also can set up stuff like the HDR mode or resolution of pictures and videos. Inside the gallery app you can edit pictures that you have taken already by adding filters to them or changing settings like brightness, contrast, saturation, color temperature and more. Lastly I want to talk about the battery life. The MX-5 comes with a 3150mAh battery which is quite a lot and enables you to get over one day and that easily, which means Meizu did well with optimization and stuff. In the settings you can switch between several energy presets including a performance mode, balance mode and energy saving mode. Depending on the selected mode the CPU clock and GPU performance gets limited. Using the power saving mode I can actually get over 2.5 days without having to visit a power socket which is pretty impressive considering that I use phones heavily and swing a lot of email and social media accounts. In case you're interested in the screen on time, here the MX-5 reached a bit more than 6 hours according to Geekbench free battery test with the performance mode activated and the screen brightness set to 50%. Charging the phone is going fast as well thanks to the M-Charge technology. It just takes 1 hour for the battery to be charged to 75% and after 1 hour and 30 minutes the battery will be fully charged. What's more, it doesn't matter if you use the original power supply or anything else with a 2 amperes output, charging time will remain the same. 
putting the pieces of the puzzle together, the Meso MX-5 with a few minor exceptions definitely is worth a recommendation, but obviously it isn't the cheapest phone you can get at about 340 bucks. Anyone who can't live with only 16 GB of memory will have to pay more and get the 32 GB version. It really is a pity that Meso didn't build in a micro SD slot into the phone. Something that disappointed me a little is the camera, which compared to the MX-4 isn't that big step forward I expected and is quite behind the competitor made by one plus. Also the flawed Wi-Fi on the international version of the MX-5 certainly leaves a bad aftertaste since this means that you have to purchase the Chinese version. Yes, this one gets updates faster but firmwares for the Chinese version don't come with as many languages anymore as they used to, which Meizu probably does to stop people from purchasing from non-official channels aka resellers. So that's all for now, I hope you did enjoy this review and in case there are any questions left, do not hesitate to drop a comment. In case you like what we do at this channel Germany, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching, over and out.